Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where we are back with the Premier League match content and Manchester United's 3-0 win over Nottingham Forest last night. And what we're going to do today is look at some of the tactics used by Ten Hag, some of the players that really impressed, but also some of the players that Ten Hag wouldn't have been so happy about. I think whilst it was an overall good performance for Manchester United, a comfortable win, I think there were a few players that weren't quite on it. But... We'll come on to that as the video goes on. First of all, I want to look at the lineup and then some of the things that we saw during the game. So, in terms of the lineup, there were a few shocks in the selection. In terms of this front six, it was kind of what we expected, but we saw Malasia at left back, Luke Shaw at left centre back. I know there were talks of that in midweek against Burnley. Varane returning from the World Cup to play, the first player to do so for any club in the world. And then Aaron Wambasaka at right back with Dallow still out which meant that Lindelof was missing through illness, McTominay was missing through illness, and Maguire was only fit enough for the bench. So this was Manchester United's starting eleven, and first of all, on Luke Shaw, filling in at centre-back, he was absolutely brilliant. He was a big part of why Manchester United played so well. And if we're looking forward to the rest of the season, Manchester United have a big Europa League tie coming up against Barcelona. Lissandra Martinez is suspended for the first leg, maybe the second leg, but I think it's just the first leg. Based on for this performance, I would certainly be considering Luke Shaw at centre-back for that game because he really put in a really good display. You couldn't tell that this was his first time playing in a centre-back partnership. He'd done really, really well. Um, to be fair, life was made easier for him by the fact that Nottingham Forest show absolutely no interest in putting any pressure on the ball. Like, when you've got players like Jesse Lingard, Brennan Johnson, you could maybe press a bit higher. There is energy in that forward line, but no, they weren't interested in it. And as a result, Manchester United found it very easy to progress the ball. Before we continue with the analysis, I want to talk to you guys about JerseyFIFA.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that's the latest home shirts, the latest away shirts, tracksuits, or even retro kits, Jersey FIFA has a bit of everything. There really is something for everyone, so if you are interested, then make sure to use the link in the description down below and head to JerseyFIFA.com. I'll often talk about ball progression shapes, kind of what shape United would use in this area to get the ball moving forward. Uh, kind of how Ten Hag could set the team up to get the ball towards the halfway line. That wasn't necessary in this game because the way that United progressed the ball this far was by walking. Luke Shaw just walking with the ball. Varane just walking with the ball. And actually, it forced Forrest really deep. And the way that Manchester United ended up attacking was with the centre-backs playing extremely high. Uh, of course, that gives them the ability to win the ball back quicker, and it allowed United to dominate. This sort of scenario, this sort of shape here, is pretty much how the whole game was played. United really were this high up the pitch and looking to dominate the ball, and they had over 60% of the possession in the end. However, the shape that they looked to use wasn't quite as simple as this, because what they often done was shifted to some form of back three, and there were a few ways that they could do this. So, first of all, you had Casemiro could drop in between the uh, two centre-backs, and Malasia would pop up almost like a solo pivot in midfield, creating a 3-1 shape like this. There were also situations when Malasia would tuck in at centre-back, Shaw would go to the middle, Casemiro would be the pivot, a 3-1 like this, and then other times where Malasia would push forward, either out wide or inside, and Eriksson would drop deep, and again we can see Manchester United have this 3-1 shape. And what it done was it gave United basically a 3-1-6. To be fair, there were even situations when Wan-Bissaka would drop in as well. But it basically gave United a 3-1-6. A base of three, Casemiro the pivot more often than not. And then one, two, three, four, five, six players all pushing forward, trying to outnumber this Nottingham Forest back four. And this is why United had so much control on the ball. Now, in terms of from here, from this point, like from a tactical point of view, I wouldn't necessarily say it was anything like a tactical masterclass. Master plus, master class from Eric Ten Hag. I don't think that was the case in this game. It didn't really need to be. United never really got out of first or second gear. However, I think what we did see in this game, perhaps a little bit more than what we've noticed in other games, is just the pure technical quality that Manchester United now have compared to what they had last season. Particularly with Eriksson and Casemiro, but also Anthony on the right wing and the inclusion of Martial up front, players like that. Manchester United have so much more technical quality on the board than what they've had in the past especially when Malasia is dropping deeper and Eriksson's moving a little bit forward. If you think uh, the past few years, it's been Fred and McTominay in this Casemiro and Eriksson position. The level on the ball now is completely different stratosphere. And what it allows United to do is to play much quicker two-touch football. So even if United were struggling to break, break down Forest, Forest in quite a compact shape here with Mangala and Yates quite narrow, United have the technical ability now 
to play quick two-touch football round the corners and break teams down in that way. So say last season you could have put United in this exact same shape, but put Fred and McTominay in the team, this performance would have been nowhere near as good, simply because they aren't as good on the ball. United now have two midfielders who are very good on the ball, and it's a credit to Ten Hag, because it shows how good his recruitment has been. And it's why he needs to be continued to be backed in January, but also in the summer. Realistically, in January, United need a forward. And I think Ten Hag has proven, with his signings so far, that he's earned that trust. Because these players just make Manchester United look a different level. Last year, this probably would have been a difficult game for United. But having this control and quality in midfield just makes United look so much better. They were also helped by the fact that Bruno Fernandes didn't drift over to the left-hand side as much as what he normally does. He was kind of operating on this right-hand side a bit more. And I was saying in my preview before the game, I thought he needed to be in this area. And he'd done some good stuff there. wan also getting forward. I thought he had a really good game, wan -Bissaka. I think probably even 10 days ago, it looked like his Manchester United career was over. With Dallow out through illness, he's kind of given himself a bit of a shot at staying at the club. Long term, probably not, but he's put in a couple of good performances. I thought Anthony on the right wing was a little bit disappointing. I thought, particularly in these situations, he would kind of cut inside. He had a couple of shots which weren't bad efforts, to be fair, but it just seemed a little bit loose. It almost seemed like his head was a little bit at the World Cup still. He just seemed a little bit loose in possession, some sloppy passes, and also in transitions, which I'll come on to shortly. He just didn't seem on it for me. I also thought Malasia down the left hand side when he was getting forward. Few moments of quality but also a few sloppy moments. But the important thing for Manchester United was that because they had this 3-1 and then this 6 and because of the fact that Varane was playing about here, Luke Shaw was playing this high up, Malasia was playing this high up, United had a good rest defence which meant that when they did lose the ball you got Fernandez, Casemiro and Eriksen all in these areas and then this back three here ready to quickly pounce and win the ball back. And typically from a defensive point of view, when you're defending and then try to clear, you try to hit the wide areas. Malasia was good with his aggression, but also when it was Shaw playing out in these areas, uh, like this, Shaw was very, very aggressive in the way that he defended, very front-footed, and time and time again it allowed United to win the ball back in this area and then set off on another attack. But all of this was made possible because of Casemiro, and the job that this guy does is he's incredible. He's top three midfielders on the planet. He is incredible. I think since moving to Manchester United, his kind of job has changed a little bit compared to what it was at Real Madrid. But wow, he is good at this new job he's got. What he does more than anything for me is he just he does stuff that people don't notice. The amount of times that he is filling into a position and he doesn't actually end up make, necessarily making the interception or the clearance or the tackle. But the amount of times he fills into someone's someone else's position is insane. Compared to, again, Fred and McTominay from previous seasons, they just don't really have that awareness, that ability to do to do that. So when Shaw is coming out and defending in these wide areas, Casemiro regularly drops in here, even in defensive third. If Varane gets dragged out into a 1 versus 1 in this channel here, Casemiro is always then dropping in to fill in for him. He is just a brilliant cover defender, and also, he is the master of the defensive transition. He is absolutely brilliant at it. Something, again, that United have been horrible at in recent years, is if they lose the ball in these advanced areas, Fred and McTominay are bypassed too easily in this zone. Casemiro is not, and his timing of tackle, his reading of play, his then, like, the actual ability to put a slide tackle in, or make the interception, it's just so good. He's got that physicality, he's happy to make a foul and stop the play if he needs to. He really is absolutely crucial to everything that Manchester United are doing, and I think he's the only midfielder on the planet that could do what he's doing at the moment. To be fair, in the second half, there were spells where Nottingham Forest tried to have a bit more of an attack and threat, and there were situations where they could overload the midfield a little bit, with Yates, Froehler, Mangala, and then Jesse Lingard dropping deeper, that kind of worked for them. And Lingard got himself into a couple of little decent pockets of space here. But again, Casemiro was there, or Shaw was aggressive to win the ball back. And the problem that Forrest now had was that once you've won the ball back here, Manchester United, in Eriksen, Casemiro, and Fernandez have the ability to quickly transition. Two of these goals came from Casemiro winning the ball back, then playing the ball forward. And that was probably, again, United's biggest threat. And... Realistically, United probably should have had five or six goals. The expected goals weren't actually that high because United didn't create the final chance, but in terms of opportunities, they got into a ridiculous amount of good situations. The amount of times Anthony had the ball either on this side, cutting inside in this area, or from the left side, but his pass just wasn't it, wasn't up to scratch. United could have had several more goals here. There was a couple of uh, there was a situation where Bruno Fernandes shot from near the halfway line when Rashford was a better option. Uh, Martial could have had another couple of goals, Rashford had another good chance, 
on the transition, once again, United were absolutely lethal, or did not lethal, the opposite of lethal. They were deadly, but not lethal. They were really threatening, but they didn't actually bury the game as early as they should have. When you go 2-0 up, about 25 minutes in, at Old Trafford, against a team like Nottingham Forest, no disrespect to them, I think you do expect a bit more of an expressive performance. I felt like this was the game where United, for the first time under Ten Hag, could have really gone and put this game to bed quite early and kind of had fun with it a little bit. United failed to kill the game and it just left Forrest just in it. There were a couple of late set pieces where you just wonder if Forrest going to get themselves back in the game. But Ten Hag made use of his substitutes. We saw Donny van der Beek come onto the pitch. We saw uh, Garnacho come onto the pitch as well, I believe, on the left-hand side with Rashford going up front. We saw Fred on for Eriksen and United did eventually kill the game. We also saw Maguire for Varane. United did eventually kill the game. I just felt that they could have killed it a little bit sooner. And I think that Ten Hag will want to work on that. So in terms of overall how I would kind of view the performance, this was a good United performance. Uh, the play for both goals from Marcus Rashford, very good. Ten Hag will be happy with the way that his team played. But I think in terms of he is a manager that is constantly asking more from his team, from his players, from himself, from his staff. I think that something that I want to work on is that in this sort of game, United are a bit more deadly. That they're a bit better with that final pass. They are killing the game nice and early. This game didn't need to be 2-0 on the 80th minute. It could have been 4-0, put to bed, and United could have relaxed a bit more. Especially with all the fixtures coming up. So that is something that he will want to work on moving forward. But in general, it was a good performance. Uh, Casemiro, the man of the match for me, just an absolute joke of a display. Rashford would be up there as well for his two goal contributions. Overall, Manchester United looked very good. Um, and they looked very comfortable. I think there's a couple more gears that they could have gone to if they needed to. But they didn't need to, and they got the win, which is exactly what they wanted. So yeah, that's all I've got to say for today's video. Make sure to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the video, and as always, I will see you in the next one.